Oh Christ. What the f**k's in here? It's just ham and cheese corn. I thought that... Just stop, yeah? Stop and think for a minute. We're telling you last week about the bread. Before Gordon Ramsay would boast 1.8 million subscribers on his main YouTube channel, 3.8 million Instagram followers, 6.5 million Twitter followers, and would dominate television with his various series, The F Word, Hell's Kitchen, Hotel Hell, Master Chef Junior, Master Chef, and of course, Kitchen Nightmares. Do you understand? Sammy? Do you understand? If you touch up, you can tell me help, I told you. You go. You. You. You guys, I make excellent food. You mother you all think that you can come in here and say these things. Are you kidding me? This is ridiculous. Before Kitchen Nightmares would feature YouTube host Michael McCrudden in their follow up episode with Amy's Baking Company. And became the number one trending story on the internet. So there's this restaurant called Amy's Baking Company. The owners are nuts. Before Gordon Ramsay would be awarded a total of 16 Michelin stars and would open over 50 different restaurants throughout his illustrious career. My dream when I started out as a chef was to discover every ingredient and never be intimidated and not know what to do with it to that level of perfection. Born in Scotland but raised mainly in Britain, Gordon's early passion was to become a football player. He was very close with his mother and resented by his alcoholic father. When injuries cost him his hopes and dreams of making it as an athlete, he scrambled to find a future for himself. His transition into the kitchen happened by accident, but it was his determination and previous failure that would push him to become the very best of the best. And had I not had the upset in football here with Ibrooks, I don't think I'd be the chef I am today. I also got a feeling he took a little bit of inspiration from Simon Cowell, don't you think? Come to think of it, that might not be a bad idea for a versus video. What's going on guys, my name is Michael Credden, documenting the life and career of Gordon Ramsay prior to fame, here for you on Before They Are Famous. Now you guys have been requesting this video for well over a year and I'm happy we're finally getting it done. The best way to get a hold of me is via Instagram or Twitter at McCreddenM. Hit me up and let me know who you want me to document next. Now let's get into this bio. Oh, I f***ed up the last word. If Gordon were here. F***ing donkey! Ah! Why is <laughs> Yeah. Well, we've had a slight problem with the, um... Come on, John. Grab some f***ing balls. You're the manager, correct? Yeah. Gordon James Ramsay was born on November 8th, 1966 in Glasgow, Scotland, but his family would move around for some years before finally settling in the English countryside of Stratford-upon-Avon, which is the birthplace of William Shakespeare. Uh, I think it was 17 different schools I went to from the age of uh, 5 to 16. His father, Gordon Ramsay Sr., was a moody and ambitious man who was fond of the booze and fond of women. He was between jobs working as a welder, a shopkeeper, and as a pool keeper. In his spare time, he played in a country music band and dreamt of fame and fortune. While his wife Helen, well, she worked both as a nurse and a cook. Yeah, my childhood was tough. Um, my father was a severe alcoholic, um, and my mum worked as a cook um, and a nurse at night. Gordon is the second of four children born into the family with older sister Diane, younger bro Ronnie, and little sister Yvonne. Upon moving to Stratford upon Avon, Gordon was a quiet kid who kept to himself and mostly as a child, well, he described himself as emotional but determined. He also loved food, football, and exercise. The first meal he recalls ever taking an interest in was his mother's bread butter pudding. His early life obsession with soccer was his driving force, and although he wasn't the most naturally gifted player on the pitch, it was his endless determination that made him the best he could be. Now, I'm not entirely sure what his weakness was, but I know he's dealing with some pretty big feet, so maybe that's what was tripping him up. You're too tall. I'm about six foot two, size 15 feet, so, you know, I... Yeah. What? <laughs> <laughs> so I have a big dick, is that what you're saying? He would pour all of his focus and energy into football and his father was hoping that he would go pro so he would cheer on his boy from the sidelines. Despite Gordon Sr's encouragement for his son's career as a football player, his own career failures and his inclination to drink were causing many a problem for the family back home. There were countless incidents of abuse, his mother Helen well, she would need stitches from time to time and he once threw boiling water on her while she lay in bed. He was a dominant force behind closed doors causing havoc for all around him. And I could never ever forgive him for hitting a woman, and that woman being mum. 
Gruden would continue to focus on his football and then attend the Glasgow Rangers Football Club, and he was with the youth policy for three years during his school holidays. During this time, he played a couple of non-league matches as a trialist. Wow. Home sweet home. Beautiful. There's some fantastic memories and there's some tragic memories. There's no other club like it anywhere in the world. His soccer career came to a sudden halt after an injury. He seriously injured his knee, smashing the cartilage during training. He continued to train and play on the injured knee, where he tore crucial ligaments. Enough damage had been done to squash any hopes of a future career as a football player, and the Rangers, they let him go. Around this time, there was also an incident where he was caught by the police for some lewd behavior in a bathroom at a pub, but who can blame him for that? We've all been young once. It was during this time that his mother Helen had finally had enough and divorced Gordon's father. The family had been through so much, and consequently it was his younger brother Ronnie who developed an addiction to heroin. What do I do? Do I sit there and join my little brother? No. I stopped for feeling sorry for myself, and I got on with it. Put my head down, learned a craft, and that's the journey I'm hoping that we're going to go on. Gordon Sr.'s behavior only got worse and he grew resentful of young Gordon's determination. Eventually it was decided that Gordon, he needed to move out on his own before things got any worse. He visited a local career office and was enrolled in a hotel and dining foundations course focused on catering. Gordon couldn't afford to go to school so he would attend college at North Oxfordshire Technical College one day a week and work six days a week running a country pub and hotel. And I knew things were bad because the head chef was deep frying potatoes and covering them with bisto granules and calling them roast potatoes. In his words, he worked like a donkey, and at school he excelled pushing himself as far as he could. He would memorize recipe books, becoming obsessed with the culinary arts. From there, Gordon would then move to London. He worked in a series of restaurants until finding a mentor and established chef, Marco Pierre White. Together they worked at the restaurant Harvey's, and Marco has been regarded as another hothead in the kitchen, and perhaps an inspiration for some of Gordon's later aggression. There was at least one incident where Marco made young Gordon cry. Now this position would last two years and ten months before Gordon was in need of a change. From there he worked with Albert Rowe at Le Gavaroche, and then worked under master chefs Joel Rouchon and Guy Savoy in France. Both of those chefs, well they're Michelin starred. Food was my calling, I think, because that was the way I could sort of disappear. Disappear, travel, learn, and get really excited about something. And my first dream was to go to France. Speaking of this experience, Gordon recalled, I found myself in a very fortunate position at the age of 22, where I got my ass kicked in France and I learned how to cook. And I always say to my young chefs, become vulnerable. Get yourself out of your comfort zone. It's a great learning experience. I think today, everyone plays it safe too much. He worked in Paris and in the French Alps for three years before taking a year work and travel break where he was in Bermuda and Italy. When Gordon returned to London in 1993, he was offered the position of head chef under chef patron Pierre Kaufman, and this was at the three Michelin starred La Tante Claire. But soon an even better opportunity would come his way. His former mentor Marco Pierre White had a new restaurant and he wanted Gordon to be the head chef as well as to receive a 10% stake in the business. In 1997 the restaurant would receive its second Michelin star, the same year his father would die at the age of just 53. By now Gordon was rubbing shoulders with the English A-listers and even cooked for Pele back in 1998. Worked 14, 15 hours a day to perfect an absolute stunning dish. It disappears in two and a half minutes. You, you get on that journey and nothing else matters except what you put on the plate. In 1998, Gordon decided it was time for him to step out on his own and start up his own restaurant under his own name. Despite his two Michelin stars from his last gig, well, this was still a huge gamble. He had to mortgage his own home, and to offset these costs, well, he invited a television camera crew into the kitchen to film a reality television show titled Boiling Point. Oh, no, I disagree. It wasn't a show. It was no. a documentary. Yeah. The show was filmed over 16 to 17 months and even documented Gordon receiving his third Michelin star in 2001. When the television show was broadcast, everyone was addicted to the hot tempered chef who had no problem dropping F bombs on national TV. Yeah, as a 25 year old junior sous chef, yeah, there's no f***ing salad in the place. I hope you're happy. The success of that documentary spawned a follow up mini series, Beyond Boiling Point, which was released in 2000. From there, it was in Ramsey's Kitchen Nightmares that he sought to turn around failing restaurants. In the pilot episode, he actually barfed. And the ratings, they spiked. What do you think? Mm. <laughs> it's 
It's gotta be sick. <laughs> From there he went on to the British version of Hell's Kitchen where he ran a cooking competition among 10 celebrities with the audience voting off contestants one by one. Then in 2005 America came calling and they wanted to introduce Gordon to the world in their own version of Hell's Kitchen. Along the way he also found time to get married, he fathered 4 children, he opened restaurants all over the world, he's taken home awards, he's the author of books and he's told a hell of a lot of people off. Who the f are you to turn around and tell me when you were like a pig? You hey. French pig! Yeah. As for the rest of the story, well, I'm gonna wrap this one up here because this is before they're famous. My name is Michael McCrud and we make all sorts of bios here for you on this channel. Let me know who you want me to document next. I'll be sure to get it done. Best way to get a hold of me is via Instagram or Twitter at McCrudNam. See you guys in another video. Boom! Hi, right, Gordon, yeah, making nice, simple beef wellington. You're fing taking a piss, yeah? In between the layers, we've got sultanas. Golden raisins, a little bit of apricot jam, and then we're gonna cover the top of that with. Fuck that! Jesus Christ. What the fuck is that? It's free real estate.